This is Twit. Now, here's John Process tweet, which maybe means even more in the long run in the scale of things. Xcode. Yeah. That's the one, okay? I gave it away. <laughs> he tweeted, I'm not going to say the final cut is coming to iPad. So, by the way, the fact that he said, I'm not going to say that makes me think it is, right? I mean, why else would you even say that? Well, this is, see, this is the equivalent of like moving the chess piece, but keeping your finger on it while you look around the, the board. But okay. <laughs> oh, you think it's a touch move, huh? All right. I'm no, not going to go ahead, but <laughs> I'm not going to say the final cut is coming to iPad, but I think that means he thinks it is. Whoops. I scrolled down. But Xcode, Xcode, Apple's very nice, very sophisticated, very thorough development platform for Mac OS and iOS is present on iOS iPad OS 14. The implications there are huge. It opens the door for pro applications to come to the iPad. I mentioned this last week on a live stream, but figured it was worth the tweet. Now, there's a couple... I want to take this part a little bit because he says iOS and iPad OS. I can't imagine developing code on an iPhone. So I wonder what no, he means by no. that. Well, but on, on an iPad, that is a big deal. On an iPad's huge. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the 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 people who use iPads and Chromebooks for web development, that is an underappreciated part of the market. It is it is surprising. All these all these like, hey, I am I am Neo of Ninja Ninja Coder and you're running something that's so simple, but it is so simple and accessible. Also, the ability to execute something not just in a uh, not just in an emulator, but in the actual device, particularly a device like the iPad, where it's not a keyboard mouse screen metaphor. It really is hold this thing in your hand, figure out like how, what, how much of a pain of a butt is it to swing your arm from one place of the screen to the other. But, but also just the, uh, the idea of Apple creating a unified coding environment where if you learn this one environment, you can build apps for everything. It really is the other shoe that's been waiting to drop for years. And that, that, that you're as, as soon as, as soon as you mentioned Prosser's tweet, I was not thinking hardware. I was thinking, yeah, that got, that got, that got my nostrils flaring as soon as I read that because he is, he is a very good source. It's huge. He's been exactly yeah. right on iPhone SE. Uh, he's kind of the newest, you know, this is the, this is, who is he, by the way? He's a, he's a YouTuber, right? He was a YouTuber for about 10 years. He's been doing a daily tech show where he would mostly just re like recap the news in a funny sort of a character way. Uh, he, was, he would just make fun of it so that it was an entertaining way to catch up on the tech news. And then he started getting Samsung and Google Pixel leaks over the last few years. Like he had a couple really, really good ones about the Pixel 4, the, I think the Pixel 3 as well, and some of the Samsung stuff. And then a, a few months ago, he started getting really good Apple leaks. So he's... so. Given everything, the, the last few leaks he's been right on, including, by the way, even the very date. It sounds like he's got somebody inside. And the time. Yeah. He tweeted and the time the out. The time. <laughs> wow. Of the yeah. SE. Yeah. So, so he's got somebody on the inside, clearly. This is really interesting. If Apple comes out with uh, Xcode, that means you will no longer need a Mac a Mac to develop. So my understanding is that this that this has been in the works for a while and that it's a similar thing to what Adobe's been doing with Photoshop but where Adobe's willing to do it in public Apple is not. And there's a bit of a shame to that because I think you know there's it's it's useful what Adobe the process Adobe is going through with Photoshop where they know they they're bringing real Photoshop in that it's the real underlying code of Photoshop but not full Photoshop because there's just so much in Photoshop <laughs> and they're trying to figure out with their users what the functionality that best suits the iPad is and I I think Apple has a similar thing with Xcode in that my understanding is that like you're not going to just have like this is Xcode for iPad and it does exactly what Xcode for yeah, the Mac. Yeah, I wouldn't does, expect that any more than a set of things. Final Cut would be you know a full. So Final, Final Cut, Cut is right? worse. Final Cut is way worse, and that's a bigger problem that Photoshop is hitting into too. And that is the iPad by comparison to a Mac is rast is drastically RAM constrained. Like the iPad right. Pro has just gotten a six gigabytes right. of RAM, where every modern Mac starts at eight gigabytes. All of them can go to sixteen gigabytes. The MacBook Pros can go to sixty-four. The Mac Pro, I think, can go all the way to I don't know Alaska on RAM and has no <laughs> problem at all. And that and but that's a real barrier for people with pro apps on the iPad. And until recently, iPads didn't even swap. And I don't I still don't know if they actually swap or now they just kind of sort of swap. But the Macs, the storage is so fast on the Mac that they're swapping all the time. It is such a different environment that I think final. Like, it would be easy to make an app named Final Cut. Right. I don't think Final Cut, as we understand it, um, 
or logic because people are pointing out how big uh, like certain um, instruments are like and how much RAM instruments take up in logic. It's the same problem. Right. But Xcode, if they could pick the things that like you as a developer, Leo, you're away from your Mac, you have your iPad, there's certain things you want to do and then it seamlessly syncs back to the Mac and you can do the other things you need to do there. There's a lot of levels. And so it's not clear what Xcode would be. Everything from what is apparently, according to uh, Steve Mosier, already present in the uh, a a preview app on iOS 13, which allows you to show layout previews for on a device's screen so you can develop on your Mac, but see on the screen, you know, do yeah. the screen layout. That would be the like the least valuable version of Xcode, <laughs> all the way up to an Xcode that would let you develop. I mean, at the very least, you'd be developing for iOS. Be really interested if you could develop for Mac OS. I bet you that's not in it. Mm. Um, so there, are, you could see a scale of it. Um, Prosser, in response to Mosier, said, it, it's not the preview app that you're talking about. He, he says, I know more than I've shown, but it's not that. So it's somewhere in between this very simple preview app and I would guess Mac OS Xcode Lite. Yeah, and Xcode yeah. Lite. <laughs> I don't want to develop. I mean, most developers would rather have a big screen, maybe even two screens, maybe one sideways for the code. I mean, a full keyboard, a mouse. Most developers are not looking to develop on an iPad. So I think you'd have to think about what is it that you would want to offer that would yeah. make sense on the iPad. Also realize that Apple is selling. Excuse me. Apple is selling iPads to education, and the iPad is a really good kid's go. computer. So right. the ability for a kid to build their own iPad apps or even build their own well, iPhone apps is a pretty big deal. It'll be the next step from Swift Playgrounds. You do Swift Playgrounds. Yeah. Now I'm okay. I get it. I understand. But I want to write something, and that's that's where Swift Playgrounds falls I want, down. <laughs> I want to make even something. Better, I, I want to sell. So, I want to sell something. Or I want to sell something. Yeah. So yeah. I could see a Swift, for instance, Swift only. Because one of the big part, one of the things that makes Xcode so big is it, it's all the cross development, all the all the extra languages. If you just had a Swift development system for the iPad, that would be very compelling, exactly in the education environment. I think you're right, Andy, uh, and for amateurs and people who just want to kind of light lightweight coding, that would be yeah. very interesting. the The reason I, it's important is we've always said Apple cannot abandon Mac OS. Until you can do everything on an iPad, you could do on a Mac. And one of the big ones, one of the ones you cannot abandon Mac OS because all iPad and iOS apps are developed on a Mac. It's the only way you can do it. <laughs> so, can you imagine doing Mac, Mac apps on an iPad? Like the inverse? That well, would be a mind trip. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess you'd abandon, if you abandon the Mac, you wouldn't have to worry about that. I don't think Apple's going to abandon the Mac. But yeah. No. This, I, I, this I still was think, a I this think. was a without which nothing a sine qua non for abandoning the Mac is well then you're gonna have development on the iPad. Yeah, no, I still think that Apple is moving towards uh, if you have uh, twelve if if you are a consumer they kind of want the first computer you think of to be an iPad if you are yes. what they define as a pro so they want you to think Mac yes so yeah that's how you start and it may be how you start coding in Swift. I would be it's very interested. Great way in to that. get people on, especially kids on the platform. Yeah. Just to get all those people developing with Swift and Swift, Swift UI. Swift Playgrounds is awesome. Uh, yeah. It would be a logical next step. Anyway, I'm, I'm excited. iOS 14 sounded better and better and better. There's all sorts of cool stuff. <laughs> this is a hell of a year for iOS and the iPad. One yeah. hell of a great year. Yeah. Yeah, the keyboard is a big step forward as well. Um, I can't wait to play with it. It is missing one thing programmers love, which is an escape key. <laughs> I don't think I don't can't think of a single reason on iOS you'd need an escape key, but if you are going to code, you need it. Maybe it's a third-party hardware opportunity, just a, a Bluetooth <laughs> escape key, just like one, <laughs> just one red key. Oh, it could be a yeah, really big blue <laughs> escape key. And you don't have any function keys on the new keyboard, which I do think is a little odd for media control and all that. But don't you have uh, command key combinations for all of that or no? Mm. Well, also, also remember that's a third-party opportunity. This is this is what Apple this is what Apple can really really do when they know that they're not the only ones who they are making every single yeah. instance of the hardware. Yeah. So they can make only they can make the three hundred the really cool three hundred and fifty dollar aspirational one that looks awesome that you probably can't afford, but it still looks awesome, and you're kind of proud to be using a computer that can use this. But then you'll go to Logitech to buy the affordable one hundred and twenty dollar one hundred thirty dollar one that maybe will have function keys and will have all the the stuff oh, you man. like. I can't wait to get on a plane or go to Starbucks and. Set up. Oh, never mind. 
you can't wait. No but showing you will off. Have to. I must wait. I must. No showing off for this one. No uh, flexing with your keyboard, Leo. It is going to look pretty, isn't it? It's too bad. No, yeah. I won't be able to show anybody. <laughs>